So let's talk a little bit about the catalog. And what the catalog does is that it's a system that lets you discover and organize your data sources across your various silos and across S3 or your other repositories that have semi-structured data. The basic of the catalog, basics of the catalog is simple. It's a Hive Metastore, or, or it's compatible with Hive Metastore APIs or Hive SQL. And that means that you can access uh, tools like Hive, Presto, Spark, and a, a variety of uh, ecosystem tools that are compatible with the Hive Metastore. You know, we've added some extensions. You can search it. You can you know, supply connection information to JDBC sources. And you can do classification for identifying and parsing files. You can version your metadata because metadata changes. So those are all you know, basic, fundamental bread and butter for a catalog. Right? We also crawl your data, if you let us. Right? And you, know, you can uh, certainly use Hive DDL, bulk import. But crawling is where you know, one of the areas where what we do is different and differentiated. So let's dig into that a little bit. So what crawlers do is that they auto-populate your data catalog. You know, the first time I saw the UX design for uh, the catalog, I uh, told them, you know, I hope you're not going to take me through some wizard experience where I'm going to like click, 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 and define the table and the data uh, things, because I'm just going to burst into tears doing that 10,000 times. You know, and they handed me a bo box of Kleenex, and then I went back and started to work on actually what the product should look like. Um, so what we're doing here is automatic schema inference. And so we have a bunch of built-in classifiers that detect the file type, uh, extract schema, record structure, data types. And so you know, how do we detect file types? So you know, it turns out that CSV files, you know, if, if you do a frequency analysis on them, they contain a lot of commas. Surprise. No. <laughs> no. XML files, a lot of you know, greater than, less than signs, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you, can, you might have to run a handful of these to figure out which ones you should try parsing first. But you know, it's, it's not that hard. Um, more interestingly, beyond our built-in classifiers, you can add your own and share them with others in the Glue community. There's, it's all Grok or Python uh, that we're running underneath the covers. And I think sharing is an incredibly important part of the Glue experience, because you don't want to be, you know, request 473 in my backlog, right? If you, and that's one of those things that forces you into hand coding, because if the tool doesn't do it, what are you going to do except build it yourself? And even if it's missing 5%, you end up having to do 100%. So you're much better off if you have a system where you can just code that 5% and introduce it into the system. We also auto detect hive style partitions, you know, grouping similar files into one table. We'll run crawlers on a schedule to discover new data and schema changes. And you know, of course, the word of the day or the word of the conference is serverless. You should only pay when your crawlers run, right? Not have resources that you're uh, paying for, even if you know things aren't running. Let's dig in a little bit more into crawling and classification. So let's talk about how automatic schema inference works. So let's say you went and you parsed something out. You've got a bunch of different per file schemas. You recognize that there's char and int and a variety of different things. And that you know, might be your per file schema. So you need to understand that. But then you want to unify that schema potentially into what is the union of, right? A, a, because your data does change over time. People do have slightly different formats in each of their tables or their files, but you want to look at it as though it's one table, at least most of the time you do. And so you, know, you can see here that there are custom classifiers that you can add to maybe you have an application that emits logs, maybe you have a metrics parser. There are a bunch of system classifiers, you know, JSON, CSV, Apache, you know, the various Grok stack that you might be familiar with. We also detect partitions. So if you have a S3 bucket hierarchy where you have one level of partition that's for a month and then for date within the month, and then you have a bunch of files there. When you generate the table, the directory structure is actually data, 
right? You want the month to get extracted into a column. You want the date to get extracted into a column. And then you want the file structures that are in there that might not contain month or date to also be extracted into columns, right? And so what we have to do there is estimate the schema similarity amongst the files to handle semi-structured logs and schema evolution and so on. And even because it's possible that someone stuck the wrong file into an S3 bucket, I'm sure it hasn't ever happened to you, it's happened to me. Um, so how do we just uh, figure out schema similarity? So, well, I'm just blowing through these slides. Anyway, um, so that's uh, basically uh, two things. The idea here, you know, this is the heuristic we're using now. I'm sure it'll evolve over time. You know, a lot of this process is getting feedback, understanding what's happening, where we make mistakes, figuring it out, and iter iterating. I mean, that's the AWS way. But you know, what we're doing right now is we basically have a simple heuristic where we figure out, well, does the name match? Does the data type match? And across these two files, does enough of it match that we should look at the intersection over the, you know, the minimum number of elements? And if it's over 0.7, then, you know, is what we're doing right now. You know, we say these files are similar. It's part of the same table. Yeah. Make sense? And of course, you know, just uh, as you'd expect, you can go and override stuff. You can choose not to run classification. You can go and enter it yourself. You can use uh, API to enter in table definitions. You can import export into other catalogs, you know, whatever. Certainly, if you're you, uh, extracting from uh, database, uh, databases using our uh, JDBC connectors, then you know, it's canonical. It's well-defined. You know, all of this stuff is, you know, what we're focusing on here is the messy part of semi-structured data where people are just throwing files into a big bucket and you have to go and figure out what's there. 